Calling to order a meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee. Welcome to Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit. Would you take us to our first contract? Sure, the first item, KSH 303-19, Community College of Baltimore County, College and Career Readiness Memorandum of Understanding. This is a new memorandum of understanding between BCPS and the Community College of Baltimore County that was originally established in 2013 to fulfill the requirements of the College and Career Readiness and College Completion Act of 2013. Dually enrolled public school students who meet mutually agreed upon enrollment requirements will have opportunities to participate in early college access programs. Approval is requested for a five-year contract extension with the option for an additional five-year contract with one recommended vendor and contracting contract spending authority of six million two hundred ten thousand and this spending authority proposed is just for the five-year initial term so we would come back to the board in the event of an extension yes right do questions mr mcdaniels thank you um my question is associated with the high school graduation task force that was talking a lot about the programs and curriculum that would apply to high school standards for the, across the state of Maryland. And programs like this were talked about quite a bit. I guess my question is, has there been any discussion in terms of standardizing the types of relationships LEAs have with community colleges across the state? Um, I am not aware of that and would have to ask Dr. Wistad if she has any things she can add to that. Hi, good afternoon. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. No, we're not aware of um, any standardization. Mm -hmm. We have a partnership with CCBC and that's what this contract's about. Okay, and again, I know we're at the very early stages of looking at the high school standards across the state. I was just curious if uh, at this point in time there had been any kind of conversations between LEAs across the state. Okay, thank you. Other questions? All right, we'll proceed to our next contract. Okay, next item, uh, JNI 723-15, certified, board certified behavior analyst. This contract modification will provide for the continued direct and consultated services provided to students with significant and intense behavioral and instructional needs, including students who are diagnosed with autism. Approval is requested for, for the consent to the assignment of this contract from Provida Staff LLC to EDU Healthcare LLC. There are five other awarded vendors on the original contract from March 2015. So this is a zero cost contract assignment? Correct, there, there's no uh, additional spending authority requested. Um, the, the other f five vendors are, are all uh, continue to be available mm -hmm. and this, this one uh, is simply a name change or an assignment. Right. Questions? You'll um, the, the million dollars is, is applicable to all the vendors then, so it'd be a total of six vendors covered by, by the Correct. authority. Thank Correct. You. Thank you. Other questions? All right. Next contract, please. The next item, JMI 610-19, Public Notice eBook Library Resources for K-12 Learners. This is a new contract for a web-based repository of ebooks and paired educational video content that has been used since 2011 to support students and teachers in grades K through 12. Approval is requested for a four-year, one-month contract with one recommended vendor and contract spending authority of $150,000. And so take us through just who can access these books and whether there's at-home access or parent access as well. Okay, I think Mr. Imbriali would best be able to answer those questions. Good 
Good evening, afternoon. Hi, good evening. Uh, so it's uh, K-12 access for all of our students, and it is uh, both at school and at home. Okay. Other questions? Very good. Next contract. Thank you. JNI 761-16 meeting space. This is also a contract modification to provide for the continued use of flexible space for large and small group meetings, training, graduations, and other assemblies at times when schools or offices are not available. Three additional facilities uh, will be added uh, and increased contract spending authority of $250,000 is requested, bringing total spending uh, contract spending authority to $1.5 million. And lastly, consent to the assignment of this contract is requested from Embassy Suites Hotel to Embassy Suites, from Maritime Institute of Technology to Maritime Conference Center, and from Wyndham Grand Hunt Valley Inn to Hunt Valley Partners, LLC. Okay, so to be clear, these spaces are used when our own spaces are not available, so on an as-needed basis. Correct. And to the extent that we do not need this dollar figure worth of space, we don't spend it and we retain it. Correct. Okay. Questions? All right, quiet bunch. Oh, there we are. Ms. Gauzy. Good afternoon, everyone. So uh, with the new vendors that were not involved in the original RFP, what were the benefits of adding them in terms of additional spaces? Um, well, one in particular is most useful Loyola Grad Center uh, on Greenspring Road. Um, but we also have had, uh, it, it provides us with flexibility, uh, and, and these folk, neither of the three bid on the original RFP, so we're adding them to provide more opportunities and more flexibilities at times that they may be needed. Do the, are there any potential cost savings with the three additional vendors? Mm, no. I mean, we're... Uh, expecting to spend more money than we originally had. But on a per usage basis, are these vendors potentially a lower cost option? Uh, let's see if I have a bid list here. I don't think I do. Well, unless uh, Ms. Webster know, has any information about the bid prices, they all submitted a standard rate for different size space, and I don't have that information with me. You seem to be doing well. So, <laughs> good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, this particular contract was not bid with pricing. This was simply a pre-qualified list of facilities who could offer us space. Typically, when an office is looking for space for a meeting, they will contact several to see who is available and at what price. Okay, so there is a, a focus on cost savings if possible. If possible, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Additional questions? Our next contract, please. JNI 736-15, private duty and substitute nurses. This is a contract modification to provide for the continued use of private duty nurses for the Office of Student Support Services. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $1 million, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $2 million, with four awarded vendors approved by the board in July 2015. So no change in vendors, but requesting additional spending authority based on student needs. As projected? Yes. And as currently seen? Okay. Uh, questions? Ms. Han. Thank you. Um, so about a dozen students are served was the information we received, and that varies, of course, based a, on yeah, student Yeah, a dozen needs. were served last year and 10 so far this year, and it does fluctuate. Okay, and can you describe the services that those students are receiving from these nurses and the scope yeah, of their I'd care? 
just as soon have Miss Somerville do that for us unless Dr. Knox is planning to do that. Thanks. Good afternoon. Good Most afternoon. of the students require, um, uh, more than half the students have tracheostomies, so they come to school, they may be on a ventilator, so they require care to monitor the ventilator, to do suctioning. Um, some of the children require emergency medicine and maintenance of airway, so rescue breathing while on a school bus um, for, so that's, that's another. So some of them require or suctioning while on the school bus, so that's the types of services that we are not able to provide by the school nurses. Okay, and that care is available to them throughout the duration of their day from Correct. transportation to and from. Correct. The nurses. Throughout the nurses available to them. Correct. Great. These are our most fragile students, so I want to ensure that what we're providing is adequate to meet their needs because that's my main concern. So. I agree with you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, seeing no additional hands, we'll move on to the next contract. JMI 611-16, Land Mobile Radio Systems and Associated Equipment. Uh, this is a contract modification to provide consent to the assignment of this contract from Teltronic Incorporated to Bear Communications Incorporated doing business as Bearcom. There are also five other award vendors on the original contract approved by the board in February 2016. We are also requesting approval to increase spot spending authority by $3.83 million to allow BCPS to accept and access grant funding that may be awarded. This modification would bring revised total contract spending authority to $4.58 million. And so to be clear, the modification amount is necessary in order for us to be able to leverage the grant funding. Correct. There are a number of grant programs that were approved by the General Assembly and Governor uh, last session. Um, so far, we're still awaiting application forms and the and MSDE is working to establish the criteria for the these prospective grants. And so we have identified these three projects uh, so that we are in a position to be able to go ahead and compete for and, uh, and be awarded to put these grants in place. Do you have a sense of timeline when we might receive additional guidance from our state partners as to the availability of the funds? Well, we, it's a day-by-day -day process of staying in touch. I yeah. know that, that the first such grant was announced um, and the money has to be spent by June 30 of 2019 okay. and we don't have an application yet. So it's like so many things that become legislation and the regulations and the administrative process has to catch up. Sure, and then we have to play pretty fast. Right. Okay, other questions? Uh, Ms. Hannah, I think I saw you first. Thank you. Um, one of the projects listed is to provide public safety radio access on all of our buses. Um, what percentage of that will be grant funded versus, I imagine, operating funds? Do you well, know? the entire amount. The entire as amount proposed will be grant funded. Here. Yes. So that will not affect any of our existing transportation funding. This is all a new Correct. revenue source that will cover that. Yes. Because I know we're scheduled in open session to receive an update on transportation. So my concern there was how that would affect other needs of transportation. So Mr. Smith saying that's independent. Thank yes. you. This is new funds, new project. Some of the awards that we hear yeah, that Mr. Smith. Coming, so. This is for for the record, if for you will. Record. Yes. <laughs> Nailed it. This is for new funding that we anticipate that will be coming from some of the safety and enhancement grants that are coming, as well as um, some of the work that we're working with Baltimore County as they improve their radio system. Mm -hmm. We're sort of getting lined up when that rolls out as well. So it's a two prong. We've been working on it for a while, but this just has us ready to go when those funds become available. Great. Thank yep. you. Yep. Mr. Smith, you might want to remain in your seat. It looks like Ms. Causey was gesturing to you. Ms. Causey. Good afternoon, Mr. Smith. Good afternoon. My question is, how does this uh, public safety radio access 
uh, integrate with or is completely separate from the other contracts that we've approved for the uh, bus location devices, the GPS um, they, it, this one is separate. However, as we're talking about the integration, I'm going to have to ask Greg to come up and really get into that particular thing because that's a little bit of a deeper end of the pool for me. So they, they will certainly have some types of interface, but I can't tell you specifically that they will be, they will be mirror image of each other. But Greg can get further into that. All right. Hi, how are you? Good. The uh, radios that we're looking at for the buses would have the AVL or uh, automatic vehicle location services built into them through GPS as well as through the um, repeater system that would be installed. So does that so obviate it, the need for a separate GPS device? No, it, it enhances. Okay. So it provides, it pulls the GPS function off of the device and then goes ahead and broadcasts it through the radio system to go ahead and indicate where the particular vehicle is located. All right. So it's an enhancement to the system. An enhancement to the system. Yes, ma'am. That's wonderful because we do know that we have issues with transportation and we want to be provide the tools and also the personnel that we need in the management to provide each of our students with a safe ride to and from school. Okay, yeah. thank you. No problem. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. All right, our next contract, please. LKO 409-19 screen reading software. This is a new cooperative contract for screen reading software for the Department of Information Technology. Approval is requested for a two-year, four-month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $75,000. And uh, we are uh, planning to ride a GSA contract uh, for this product. Questions? Ms. Hen. Thank you. As I understand it from the description, this consolidates um, purchases by different departments that are now purchasing their own screen reading software. Am I reading that correctly? Into uh, providing licenses for one product versus Several in the statement I'm referring to is the third bullet. Um, yeah. Expenditures for screen reading okay. software by various offices will exceed 25000 annually. This could reduce costs. Is this standardizing to a single purchase? So that is correct. So we have the, our assistive technology um, office is currently purchasing the software, and we too in the Department of Information Technology want to purchase the software, additional licenses to be able to test. Um, so we, we'll use it for auditing websites as well as test products that are being developed. Okay, so this will replace a, an existing product that is currently in place. It sounds like multiple, many to one. Is that? No, it's all statement. the same product. We want to buy more of the same product. More of the same product. Yes. So, so um, other offices are buying that same product, and we too want to buy that same product. Under the same agreement. Correct. So our cost savings is by consolidating those into one. So students use the product directly, and the website needs to be accessible to those with disabilities as well. And the the voice reading the reader function will be used for that purpose as well. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I believe our next contract is ready. MBU 521-16 ice cream. Uh, this is a contract modification to provide for the continued purchase of ice cream for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $700,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $1.55 million with the one awarded vendor approved by the board in June. 2015 and the additional spending authority uh, is required in part because of additional uh, s uh, meals served but also because uh, in the original presentation in 2016 the two uh, extension year spending was not included in the original estimate for the total contract period. So let's take that back. So in 2016, we didn't bake into our expense the additional extensions that we expected right. to um, leverage. Okay. Questions? Yeah. 
Mr. McDaniels, for the record, notes that's a lot of ice cream. <laughs> okay. Uh, our next contract, please. Uh, MBU 501-19, Vehicle Services and Repairs. This is a new competitively bid contract for vehicle services and repairs for the Office of Transportation. Approval is requested for a five-year, one-month contract with 21 bidders and contract spending authority of $2.5 million. Our questions. Ms. Han. Thank you. Um, so among the repair services um, included, air conditioning systems are listed. Are those for, does that refer to vehicles that are already equipped with air conditioning or are we talking, I noticed that our buses are, are listed and it's mm -hmm. probably wishful thinking to think that some of our school buses may be receiving air conditioning. Team maintenance as we refer to ourselves, we do all the air conditioning work that is vehicle related. The air conditioning system we're talking about here is specifically for the refrigeration unit on top of the food service trucks because that's a completely different system. Okay, wishful thinking it was. Thank you for confirming that. Our, our buses and we have heard from drivers that those conditions can be quite rough. So yes. um, have we ever um, looked at pricing that for our fleet of buses out of curiosity? Yeah, the contract that we currently have um, provides for air an air conditioning installation when we purchase. Yes. Yep. So for new vehicles? Yes, yes. not walking. retrofit. Not retrofit for our current fleet. Okay, thank you. Ms. Causey. Hi, um, if you could just clarify, we do have, my understanding is we do have a few limited buses for some of our um, special needs children that are air conditioned. 252 okay. special needs buses plus eight extended special needs buses. That are all are equipped with air conditioning. Okay, and then to clarify that moving forward, new buses that we purchase generally will have air conditioning. That has, that has not been decided yet, so we, we have to work with our county partners as it relates to how, how we get that in there because our normal specs does not have that included. So that we don't okay. want to give you that impression that all of them moving forward. That's what I wanted to clarify. We're going to certainly make that ask every year as we do to make sure that we can get AC on the buses, but that means that we have to start a process of, as all of our buses are replacing, and that could mean that the cost that we get assigned each year for buses would mean we may get fewer buses because we're spending more on each individual bus. So we'll have to work that into our, our long range replacement cycle. Okay, thank you. Yep. Particularly if we're going to address school start times, we might have to deal with our transportation ad amount that we have, right? Yes, sir. There you go. Ms. Cause, the other questions? No, that's all, thank you. Okay. Mr. Stewart, just as a follow-up comment to that. Please. I would ask that the board receive that information a, as an option so that we have it when we're looking at our budget of what it would require um, to modify our specs to ensure that all future buses we do purchase are AC equipped. Thank you. And to be clear with this contract, my understanding, or at least inform me, we perform a certain amount of maintenance and service in-house. The extent that we have overflow or specialized needs, then we reach out to these contractors. Is that right? Absolutely. All right. We pride ourselves in doing work in-house. I would imagine. Okay. Thank you. Our next contract. You want to go ahead? Good evening. Uh, next contract, MWE 80119, is for a request for construction easement at Kearney Elementary School. Uh, this is a project that State Highway Administration uh, is working with the Baltimore County, and it will widen and improve traffic patterns at the intersection of Joppa and Harford Roads. Uh, in case you don't know about the easement, this is granting of a limited right on a property or on a portion of property to another party. In this case, it's a temporary easement, and it is being done to comply with their ADA, ADA requirement. There is no financial transaction. Okay, questions? Ms. Han. 
Um, the placement of the easement, I noticed, is in front of a memorial that exists in front of Kearney Elementary. Uh -huh. And I know from the plans we received, they, there was a note indicating that there was no impact That's true. to that. And I wanted to confirm that and see if there was any additional information you could provide. It's a very nice memorial. Um, there will be my no grandfather impact. is recognized on it, so I visited it several times and know it personally. Yeah. Can you we'll make sure there is no impact to memorial. Okay. This, this and is what is the distance? Do we know the clearance? Uh, the, the there's memorial. detailed drawing on that attached with the board exhibit, mm -hmm. but uh, we do not anticipate any problem. This, this was considered when we uh, talked to them. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? I believe that's our last contract for the evening. Thank you. Right. So, board members, do I have a motion to recommend to the full board for its approval items P1 through P10? So moved. Uh, second. Second. All in favor, please raise your hands. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee is concluded.